In today's video, we're going to break down the differences between two popular working breeds, the Doberman Pinscher and the German Shepherd. Now welcome back to the Femrear Doberman Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will, I'm a canine behaviourist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Doberman, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Dobermans. So if you're a Doberman lover like we are here at Femrear, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell and you'll never miss a future Doberman video. So let's dive into today's video and we're going to go through the differences and similarities between these wonderful German guard dog breeds. And to start our comparison, let's compare the origins of the two breeds because we can't know where we're going until we know where we've been. The Doberman originated in Germany in the 19th century and we can thank tax collector Louis Doberman, resident of Germany, for the creation of this wonderful working breed. Louis Doberman's job was a dangerous one and as a tax collector his presence was very rarely welcomed. So he set out to create a breed that was intelligent and imposing to accompany him during his collection rounds. A few other breeds went into creating this canine masterpiece, including a black and tan terrier, a German pincher, a Rottweiler, some smooth coated herding dogs for example and to this day the Doberman Pinscher is one of the very few dog breeds developed for serving as a human personal protection dog because most other dogs grew into that role later on which takes us on to the German Shepherd who on the other hand was created in the 1800s when German cavalry officer Captain Max von Stefnitz made it his mission to create a superior herding dog for tending which is a type of herding where the dog acts as a living fence to keep livestock in one location. He and others aligned with this goal such all over Germany and brought together some of the finest native herding dogs for this cause. Von Stefnitz spent 35 years refining and getting the breed into the limelight and the German Shepherd was wonderful serving its original purpose but after a time when the breed found itself jobless thanks to modernization it quickly found its way into other roles such as law enforcement and military work that we know and love it for today. Now the German Shepherd and Doberman are two very distinct breeds when it comes to look, so let's discuss those a little bit now. The Doberman is also a reasonably easy breed to spot, even by someone who doesn't possess a vast knowledge of dog breeds, especially large powerful guarding ones. They are tall, muscular and elegant dogs that scream athleticism. With a long muzzle that looks like a blunt wedge, usually their ears are cropped and their tails docked to give them a more sleek and imposing appearance. Though docking and cropping is becoming illegal in many parts of the world, including here in the UK, and we see more Dobermans with long tails and their natural floppy ears. There is also some disparity between American and European lines, with American lines being more slender and streamlined, while European lines being more muscular and robust. The Doberman traditionally comes in black and tan. There are other colours within the breed, even if they aren't accepted in the breed uh, as a breed standard, such as blue and rust, Isabella, red and rust, all black, white and even albinos. Now the German Shepherd has a long narrow muzzle with a scissor like bite. Tall, alert, with erect ears, this is a muscular athletic dog with graceful movements. It bodies, his body takes on more of a rectangular shape as it is longer than it is tall and they come in two different fur lengths, long coated and standard coated. Initially the breed came in a multitude of colours. Today the colours accepted for the German Shepherd include black and tan, black and red, sable and black and outside, outside of these kind of accepted colour standards you can still find German Shepherds who are white, liver, fawn, Isabella, grey, black and silver and Brindle is now appearing much more thanks to a genetic mutation in some of their lines. Hey guys, I wanted to quickly jump into this video and let you know about our Fenrir Odin bungee lead if you've never seen it before. As a canine behaviourist, it's the lead that I designed and created myself to be the world's strongest yet most comfortable lead that you can use even with the world's most large powerful dog breeds. We utilise the best clip in the entire world married with military grade webbing and bungee to allow you to have the maximum amount of control with the maximum amount of comfort. So if you want more information on our 
our Fenrir Odin bungee lead, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video. So then what is the temperament difference between the German Shepherd and the Doberman? Well, temperament can vary between the two different lines of Dobermans in particular, which is where we'll start. Americans are less of a working dog and have a gentler disposition, whereas the European lines are bred more for work and they have much higher drives. They typically have more stamina and can be considered braver than their American counterparts. However, the breed overall is loyal, fearless, alert, and incredibly intelligent. This breed is not one to try any funny business with. They are incredibly strong, both mentally and physically. Now, the working line German Shepherds, such as Eastern German working lines or Western German working lines, and the Czech lines tend to be more on the intense side. This also includes more of a desire to work and those higher drives. Now, in contrast, show lines and pet lines tend to be a little more on the gentler side. However, the German Shepherd as a whole is incredibly intelligent, willing, courageous, and fiercely loyal. Sadly, it can be incredibly challenging to find a German Shepherd with those good temperaments overall specific for family companion roles with the introduction of more higher drive animals and bad breeding practice nervousness that has cropped up within the breed has made this more of a challenge but definitely not impossible if you put the effort into finding a perfect breeder so then we know both of these breeds are incredibly intelligent but is there actually much separating them well the doberman is smart and not just smart but really smart on dog breed intelligence rankings they don't fall far behind the german shepherd and typically come in around number five on the ranking chart this breed requires a top notch canine leader to be at the helm and like the german shepherd an ill-prepared owner might find themselves being owned by their doberman as opposed to the other way around this breed was created to be a personal protection dog so it can also be very protective of its owners now the german shepherd is considered one of the world's smartest dogs and comes in at number three on the breed ranking for most intelligent breeds the German Shepherd is one of the most popular and widely used dog breeds for working roles for this reason. Owners of this breed need to stay vigilant and stay one step ahead of this smart canine. Even experienced owners may sometimes find themselves outsmarted by their German Shepherd. It's not rare at all. And as a canine behaviorist, we see this every single day. Now, which of these two breeds is more trainable then? Well, the Doberman has high trainability. This is a big breed that lives and breathes to please its people. Now obedience is an absolute must with this breed given their smarts and the temperament behind it and with their eagerness and desire to learn this can be a relatively easy task as the breed can quickly grasp new concepts. The Doberman can also excel in a variety of work including military, police work, Schutzhund, personal protection work, agility and service dog roles. Now, the German Shepherd is one of the most trainable breeds in the world. On top of being able to learn incredibly advanced obedience skills, they also find themselves in a variety of field work such as herding, agility, Schutzhund, personal protection, service work, scent work, bomb detection, police work, military work, therapy dogs, obedience competitions, rally competitions, dock diving, and many, many more. And for good reason. These are an incredibly intelligent and easily trainable dog breed. So then which has more energy, the German Shepherd or the Doberman? Well, the two variations of Doberman can have quite different exercise requirements. American lines being very active dogs, but less demanding than the European lines. European lines are not for the faint of heart or lazy of soul. They need a structured activity that resembles a job to keep them content and stop them from becoming destructive companions. Now, overall, this breed is a fairly active one, though most do have a off switch that we like to call it though there is some disparity between lines with working lines being much more active much more intense and less of an off switch as they are working dogs they do require a lot of physical stimulation they will need a long walk and a good play session with obedience training every single day to keep them from using those destructive behaviors to kind of satiate that need for physical and mental stimulation so then how do they compare when it comes to health and life expectancy well doberman 
humans, first of all, tend to live around 10 to 12 years. The breed possesses a large and unfortunately unpleasant list of health issues, including hip dysplasia, elbow dysplasia, dilated cardiomyopathy, von Willebrand's disease, progressive retinal atrophy, albinism, hyperthyroidism, IVDD, and degenerative myelopathy. The life expectancy of a German Shepherd is unfortunately a little bit less, around 7 to 10 years. And the breed has also a long list of health problems. And health problems with the German Shepherd tend to be, again, hip and elbow dysplasia, bloat, degenerative myelopathy, uh, multi-drug sensitivity, von Willebrand's disease. Uh, blue colour German Shepherds can also suffer from colour dilution, alpecia, which can cause health, uh, hair loss. And there's just a variety of other different illnesses that they can be more prone to, which is why you must find an incredibly good breeder and go through a good vet program with both of these breeds as soon as you bring them into your home. So then what about their social needs? Well, the Doberman has a very heightened need for social activity with its owner. A Doberman will never be far from its owner's side and they, they enjoy accompanying their people wherever they go. Now, a Doberman is probably one of the worst dog breed choices to remain outside and without human interaction for long periods of time. This breed is often so in tune with its people that they can become oversensitive and even become sick to their stomachs if there is stress or arguing in the household, which might seem like a strange concept, but I promise you it is very common within the breed. So calm, consistent leadership and being able to be with their people is absolutely crucial. Now, the German Shepherd is also a people-oriented dog, and they want nothing more than to be with their people and to serve them. Loyal is an understatement. This breed does not do well being left on their own for extended periods of time either. They will be devoted to the whole family, but often pick one person who is their favourite and bond with them in particular, and that is, tends to be the person that exudes that calm, consistent leadership that we always preach. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and it gave you a lovely little overview of these two breeds and comparing them to hopefully help you make an informed decision on what the perfect breed for you is and whether that might be the Doberman or maybe it might be the German Shepherd. If you did enjoy it, please hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it when you do. And don't forget, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. That way you'll never miss a future Doberman video because I can't wait to speak to you on the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.